Hello, my grade 5 students. How are you? Hope you are fine. Today, our lesson is about starch and green leaves. It's page 20 in your book. So, please open your books to page 20. At the end of this lesson, you are going to identify the role of chlorophyll in the chloroplast. And you are going also to identify that green plants produce starch. Here is now let's the start a small warm-up activity. I'm going to play this video. In this video, but there is a man who is dancing the photosynthesis the dance. So what you are going to do is you are going to see the video and you are going to do like him. So you are going to say the photosynthesis. Uh, song that he's saying and you are going to dance with him the photosynthesis dance are you ready let's start so watch the video and do like the man So let's repeat it together. I'm going to start my lesson with a little bit of recap. So we are going to recap what we studied last time about photosynthesis. And as you heard in the song, we, we studied that the cycle of photosynthesis starts with the plant absorbing minerals and water from the soil. And this water and mineral is going to go up. It's going to be absorbed by the roots and then it's going to go up with the, uh, with the uh, stem. So when it goes up to the uh, stem, The raw sap is gonna go up. So the waters and minerals we call them raw sap, and the raw sap is going go to go up to the stem and it's going to be distributed uh, through by the transport tissues that we call xylem to all the parts of the plant. Meanwhile, the carbon dioxide is going to be absorbed by the tiny holes that we call stomata that are present in the leaves. So we said that in the leaves is where photosynthesis takes place. Then we said that for photosynthesis to happen, plants need sunlight, they need also carbon dioxide, and they need water and minerals from the soil. And so photosynthesis involves sunlight, raw sap, and carbon dioxide. And uh, during photosynthesis, we said that the raw sap that the uh, plants have absorbed and it's going to be distributed to all the parts of the plant, it's going to become elaborated sap. Uh, and this elaborated sap is uh, going to be distributed by the vascular tissue that we call phloem to the rest of the plant. And this is where oxygen is released. So, we said that the plant takes CO2 and it's going to give O2. So a big quantity of O2, which is oxygen, is going to be released. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Green plants, we said that they produce elaborated sap. And this elaborated sap is also called starch so what do we call elaborated sap sap what do we call the elaborated sap excellent starch repeat after me elaborated sap we called it starch excellent now we are going to do a small activity so we learned that green plants produce elaborated sap or starch, especially in their leaves. 
But how can we detect the presence of starch? So how can the presence of starch be verified? We are going to use that by performing an experiment. So we are going to know how it's going to be verified by performing an experiment. So the purpose of the experiment is to test for starch. So here in this figure, we have a starch solution and we added a few drops of iodine solution. So we said that starch plus iodine solution, what's going to give us? It's going to give us a blue color. So when we add the starch with an iodine solution, it's going to give a blue color. So the presence of starch is going to be very verified using the iodine solution. If there is a starch, it's going to give us a blue color. If there is no starch, it's going to give us nothing. Okay? Clear? Good. Now we are going to perform an experiment, as you can see in this picture. So, for this experiment to happen, we took a few geranium leaves, were selected, so we selected few geranium leaves. Some of those geranium leaves are yellowish white patches, so possess yellowish white patches. The others are completely green, and we exposed them to sunlight for many hours. So, we selected geranium leaves, some possess yellowish white patches, the others they are totally green and we exposed them to sunlight for many hours. After that, we boiled the leaves in water, as you can see in the picture. Then we placed them in a beaker containing alcohol. So the small beaker that is containing geranium leaves uh, is placed in water and we boiled it at first. Then we place this small beaker in a big beaker that contains alcohol. This beaker, was placed in another bigger beaker containing hot water and then the whole apparatus was left in this way for 10 minutes. So first we boiled the leaves in water, then we placed them in a beaker containing alcohol. After that, this beaker was placed in a bigger beaker that contains hot water as you can see in the figure. And then we left them for 10 minutes. After that, we took the leaf out from the alcohol and we washed it with cold water. And we soaked the leaves in iodine solution. So we did the iodine test. So I'm going to repeat what we did. So at first, we uh, selected geranium leaves. Some of those geranium leaves possess yellowish white patches. The others, they are totally green and we put them in sunlight for many hours. After that, we boiled the leaves in water, then we placed them in an alcohol, in a beaker containing alcohol, and this beaker also was placed in another bigger, bigger beaker that contains hot water. And then we left the apparatus for 10 minutes. Then we washed, the, we, took the leaf, uh, we took the leaves out from the alcohol and we washed them with cold water, and then we did an, uh, an iodine solution. Now I want from you to observe the following image, figure 8, which is a geranium leaf during the experimental stages. So first we took the geranium leaf, as we said, and we exposed it, uh, we exposed it to sunlight for many hours. And then the leaf lost its green color, so there is no more chlorophyll. And then we treated the leaf with iodine solution in the last, in the third stage. So observe this image very well and then answer to this question. What will be the color of the decolorized part of the leaf, the one that was green after being treated with iodine solution? So what will be the color of the decolorized part of the leaf? the one that was green after being treated with iodine solution. Observe the image very well. You can see the color after being treated with iodine solution. 
So think, then answer. Excellent. So the color will become blue. As you can see in the picture, you see the blue color. What can you conclude? Excellent. So we conclude that the green part, what does it contain? It contains starch because we said the iodine solution only it gives us a blue color when we have starch. What is in your opinion the role of chlorophyll then? So when we did the test of iodine, to test for the presence of starch, it gave us a, a blue color. So what is in your opinion the role of chlorophyll? From where the starch did it come? Think then answer. Excellent. So the chlorophyll produces starch. That's why we find the starch in the leaves. What can you conclude? Excellent. So we conclude that chlorophyll produces starch. And we can identify the presence of starch by testing it with iodine solution. It will give a blue color if there is starch. So I want from you to copy the conclusion and the questions on your copybook. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Bye!